hell institution Drop what it's taught to fill a forgotten spot in the curriculum that can't be filled by SPIs and proctors Turn students into empathetic doctors The yes man, transplant surgeon who had a plan became a pitch man Still they called him mad man, created his own brand by using his own hands By 16, they placed him in charge of the branches man and still he did it, with all his patients come into clinic Discharged and readmitted, he was ever so committed Inside he was working till one day he cried I finished And his plan was approved as soon as it was submitted Then the transplant organs came to the OR he proclaimed Had IV fluid strip dripping down my veins Put a scalpel through my heart, connected it to my brain His dean was revealed, in the med school I would reign Got around breaking out of its containment Faculties infected and spreading it to the patients Med school education, it would never be the same And the world's gonna know his name What's your name, man? Dr. Michael Inglesby Furter My name is Dr. Michael Inglesby Furter And there's a million cures we haven't seen But just you wait, just you wait Scenes later, see angles being his partners close to quitting. So sad, sitting in their own mess, so much stress. The infection still spreads, putting Cindy to the test. He called up Carol Kaufman, and Kaufman replied with her advice. Or oh, stop the source, but you know that I'm drunk inside a voice saying, Cindy, you gotta figure this out. Started pre treating and thinking it's infection, there's no doubt. There would have been nothing left to do for someone less as do We would have been dead or destitute without a beloved institution. Started swabbing, Tobman, looking for that missing clue. Sending samples to the lab, just like Kaufman said to do. Scraping off every scout. I could get my hands on Waiting on The culture with which To make my plans For the fate of a ward Heading for the bedpan At UM I can be a new man At UM you can be a new man Struck hero and his surprisingly manlike sidekick. The two were in the throes of identifying and diagnosing a sex charged epidemic that was sweeping the wards. Believing they may find some answers down in the bowels of the hospital, the two rushed to the emergency department, hoping to discover more than just allotted seekers and Corey Zink looking to score a quick pelvic exam. Let's watch. gathers, and now my shift begins. It shall not end until my death. Ka! Or until you lose your virginity, Michael. Ka, ka, ka! 
Dr. Joe House, you're nothing but a stupid crow. So let me tell you this. I, Mike Cole, am the watcher of this here wall. I am the securer of the airway, breathing, and circulation. I am the pads of the AED. I am the blade that drains the abscess. I am the digit that examines the rectum. Ooh, uh, but, but Dr. Cole? I pledge my life and honor to the night shift. Dr. Cole? For this night shift and all night shifts to come. But Dr. Together, Cole? Together, staff, we will defend this uh, wall and prevent all patients from entering our hospital wards. Dr. Cole? Dr. Cole? What uh, is it, Dr. Rob Huang? Ahem. Dr. Cole? Oof, it seems to be a, ooh, a confused geriatric patient with a walker wandered in from the, from the waiting room? A uh, white walker, if you will? This shit has been had back to the waiting room for triage. Uh, turn you around, as you wish, Lord Commander Cole, but it uh, may be hard to contain them for long. The waiting room's as close to bursting as well the seams on Kent Sheet's sweater vest. Come on. That's it. Here we go. Ah! Ah! Creature, take another step, and you're in for trouble. Yeah! There are no golden showers on this wall! <laughs> thank me, thank me. This is a beautiful wall. Very big, just huge. Bigger than my hands, I swear to Putin. This is a lovely wall, huge wall. And this crowd, what a beautiful crowd. Biggest crowd in smoker history. Over, over one million people here tonight. <laughs> Obama never did that. This is beautiful. Like my daughter Ivanka, who, if she wasn't my daughter. Hey, Trump. Grab this! It's okay. I landed on a giant stack of executive orders that I signed but never read. Whew. Oh my gosh. The waiting room is overflowing. It's like the sewage at Fyro in there. Come on down, you guys. We've got to start seeing some patience. Hey, we'll be down, right down, Robbie. Well, is this a new Jew? I like that. He's good. He's good. Look at that volume. Well. Thank you. Nice hair. Let's, uh, let's check in, shall we? Let's. I think we should go see the wildling, Sally Santon. She'd never let a patient take advantage of her. All right, sir. What brings you into the ED tonight? Well, you know, <coughs> it was getting kind of hot and heavy with me and my lady friend, but, uh, you know, my black genetics didn't come through for me. <laughs> Doesn't he know how to stick him with the pointy end? Kill! You don't know nothing about that, you big dumb virgin! Mm, and how does that make you feel? <laughs> well, lucky for you, I got my lucky mag I mean, uh, medical alert button, and I've alerted the medical authorities. Well, I'm so glad we were able to squeeze you in. I think your case will require a special technique. Let me loosen up this gown. 
Hey, gods be good. Nothing wrong or odd going on here. Let's go check in with Dr. Nick Thayuni, shall we? You gotta help me, Doc. I've got type 4 fibromyalgia, and it's been flaring up really bad. Oh no, you poor sweet thing. How does that make you feel? Um, terrible. I am so sorry to hear that. If there's anything I can do for you, just name it. Well, now that you mention it, I think I just need a fix. I, I mean, a hit, or a dose. A dose of this drug that I've heard of. Starts with a D, rhymes with relotted. You know, just to take the edge off. Well, I'd be darned if this wasn't a textbook case of hug-seeking behavior. <laughs> sure, you can have whatever narcotic you want. We have morphine, oxycodone. Oh, here's a fentanyl lollipop, my favorite. Oh, Dr. Thayuni, this is just what I needed. Thank you. By the old gods and the new! I thought only our residents were supposed to cave that easily. Yeah, and uh, he didn't even offer to ultrasound the patient. Pretty sure that's a first. What in the bloody hell is going on in my emergency department? What's going on? Someone's going down in here. And we do not like it. Cynthia Lipset in the house. Who's in charge here? It's my watch, Cynthia. Monica, it's been a long time since I've seen a woman. Oh. <laughs> Dr. Cole. Have you noticed anything strange going on in your ED? Why, now that you mention it, Dr. Sinti, I have. So let me tell you this. I have seen some very weird things going on in this here hospital. Doctors are giving out opiates like candy. And I swear a patient died of appendicitis earlier because Dr. Ben Bassin decided to milk his prostate instead of order a general surgery consult. Yeah, and now that you mention it, Dr. Laura Hobson discharged a STEMI patient because she didn't want him to spend his birthday in the cath lab. <laughs> and the nurses, they're all refusing to start IVs. They say a pinch and a burn is a little too ouchy. And I think Sally Santon just filleted that patient. All you talk about is sex, you horny virgin. <laughs> what in the bloody hell is going on here? I have no idea what is going on in this ED. All right, team, we have a code. You know what to do. I'll check his stroke volume. And I'll assess his injection fraction. I'll palpate his chest. I can feel his ventricle walls fibrillating with desire. Well, I don't think that's his heart vibrating. I think the whole ED is shaking. It can't be! Arno Kunagai! I heard that guy was banished to the north of Canada. What do me 
and corticosteroids have in common? Ho, ho, ho. We're both bad to the bone. <laughs> now that I got that obviously pre-planned joke off my chest, everyone stop what you're doing and take a giant step back. I went north, things aren't the same All this empathy is really insane After I left, I thought that you would be fine But you guys really went and crossed the line Whatever happened to your ACLS? This patient is in cardiac arrest Quick, someone get me my defibrillator pads We can bring this guy back, shock him from his flatline, yeah! Ow! Opportunity, run the code We gotta wake up, is a say no? Hop a 2D, run the code. We gotta wake up, is that say no? Hop a 2D, run the code. We gotta wake up, is that say no? Hop a 2D, run the code. We gotta wake up, is that say no? happened to you guys? This isn't the U of M that I remember. I mean, when I created the family-centered experience, I was trying to create a more empathetic culture here at the medical school. But this, all this that you got going on, this is just ridiculous. I demand to know who's responsible. We believe Dr. Engelsby Furter is behind it. Check! And we know that the counselors Amy and Eric are up to something. Check, check. <laughs> and we know that Dean Daniel is going around trying to teach empathy. No, no, no. I tried teaching empathy, and it doesn't work. <laughs> Don't you guys get it? Empathy is something that lives inside all of us. You can't just force it on each other. None of you understand. I dreamed a dream of FCE. Aww. Bring it in, guys. I could use a hug right now. Okay, okay I can't. Now I can't breathe. Okay, please, please get off. Okay, this is way too much empathy. Lash lived. Oh, my God. Nick here, too, my guy. Go start at 11? Did you do that? Yo, man, I told you she was trouble. Come on, guys. Let's get out of here before they see us. Speaking of stranger things, for the first time in my life, I think Kumagai is right. Empathy can't be manufactured or forced upon people. But then how can we explain how quickly it's spreading throughout the entire hospital? Spreading? Monica, this sounds infectious. And like my gal pal Carol Kaufman always says, all infections have a source. We need to collect some samples. I'm on it. Here, down in the ED, an infection is spreading. No, it's not Zika, spreading from Dean's docs. Be my witness, I never shall yield till the hospital's clean. Till the hospital's clean. She knows her way to their loins. I know my way through the wards. Those infected have all become lechers, seeking carnal rewards. 
And if they fall as Kevorkian fell, our dogs restored spots in your multitudes. Can't even count them, filling the clinics purple and red. You are the vectors now. Sticky and flushed, doing things in the night, awful things in the night. I know my way through the wards, but am I fighting in vain? For all those infected return and return, all acting insane. And if they fall as Ben Carson fell, I'll Must be, and so it is written. Samples off to pathology to be cultured to find a cure, to find relief. Carol, help me find them so I may see them. Safe in the lab, I will never rest till then. This I swear, this I swear by the Great swab job, Monica. It was an honor to swab for you, Sandro. Let's get these samples to the lab. Let's do it. Oh. Oh. Hey. Oh, God. Well, if it isn't Kent Sheets, oh. bastard son, oh. Oh. fat bastard, oh. house of family medicine. What are you doing in my ED? Oh, thank God. I caught you guys just in time. I'm no doctor, but I think I'm having another aortic dissection. Uh, uh, is it a type uh, one or a type two? Uh, uh, what's the one that makes you feel like you're gonna crap your pants? That uh, uh, sounds like you're having a type d number two. Uh, oh, oh, it's oh, the White Walkers. Uh, They're headed for the wall. Uh, Quick, uh, everyone uh, make for the elevator. Uh, we gotta get out of here. Uh, 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 Thank you, Dr. Beverly Yashar. Uh, excuse me, Frau Yashar. Yes, Dr. Hirsch. I think I'm going to need a second look. Maybe, maybe later, Dr. Hirsch. <laughs> Listen, everyone. I just ran into Dr. Joel Howell, and he says that there's an infection spreading through the whole hospital. He hasn't seen anything like it since the Victor Von Herpes outbreak of 1918. Relax, has Douglas Gelb taught you nothing about neurology? Just everyone, let's just all sit back down. What do you think it is? It's Kretzfeld Jakob. Kretzfeld Jakob? The human form of bovine cow disease? That's a BSE diagnosis. Neurology's BS. How dare you? It's probably some form of Canadian bioterrorism. Good thing I'm a PhD. I don't have to see patients. I don't have to worry about this. 
I don't know what it could be, yes. Dr. Imperiali, but we can never be too careful. Quick, John Williams, lock the door. <laughs> I'm on it. At times like these, I like to ask myself, what would the kidneys do? No but one asks that. I ask, what would the kidneys do? No, no one. But first, let me humbly brag about my past accomplishments. Uh, have you heard of Johns Hopkins? Never. Everyone has heard of Johns Hopkins. I'm Eva Feldman, MD, PhD, and I would just like us to all relax and just wait, follow the rules until the CDC gives us the all clear. I love following the rules yeah. and looking great. <laughs> Well, we, the combined doctors Kathleen Alsop and Glenn Fox, henceforth known as Dr. Fox Love, know how to stay away from all danger. We just hide in a cold lab with dead people on slabs all day long, don't we, Glenn? Absolutely, my hot Tennessee chicken. The smell of formaldehyde is a natural repellent to the medical students, a perfect place for office hours. Wait, what if they infect our MSTPs? We'll lose our free labor. <gasps> infect our MSTPs? Lose our free labor? That would be a tragedy! Did anyone else see that? Me just say oh, this. Here we go. The cost of education at this medical school is too darn high. The top 1% of the top 50% pay 730% of tuition, while the bottom quarter of students attend only 15% of required classes. Try Dr. making some money, Bernie. Dr. Altshuler, please, for the umpteenth time, call me Bernie. Oh. Ah! Fine. But I don't understand what the big deal is. It's just me, the director of the Cancer Center, Eric Furon. Ah! <laughs> Very funny. And I'm going to defriend you on Facebook, Imperiali. What? You wouldn't dare. What? Are my eggplant frittatas with my regatta in Spain too much for you, Eric? First of all, that post only had like four likes, and half of them were your own kids. Uh. <laughs> I can't believe you'd say that, Eric, but I'm really sorry. This infection business has got us all a little bit on edge. That's Please okay. like my post. It's okay. There's no need to panic. People just seem to be a bit more touchy-feely than usual. In fact, I seem to have two of the infected in my lab right now. They seem to be running a fever, but they're otherwise harmless. <laughs> Michael, Jennifer. <laughs> These two have been copulating in my lab for the past six hours, despite the fact that I've depri deprived them of Gatorade, and I don't know where the fluid comes from anymore. <laughs> Why don't you two show these fine people that you showed me. I was afraid to touch without gloves. Never even done a DRE. No, not she. Uh uh. I saved my heavy petting for the proper setting and only after very. Now all my fear has passed The change was fast I've been infected, I want more More, more, more I'm firing on all pistons My body in position
You see, there's nothing to fear. Dr. Michael Anglesby Furter has finally managed to teach empathy. Excuse me, do you mind if we just, uh... No, please. You two get a star on your slide. <laughs> Man, I love those guys. Anyone else hear that? No, no one else hears that? Fine, I'll go check. I think it's coming from this thing called lab storage. Ah! A little to the left. Don't stop. Now back to the right. Just like that. That's the spot. And boom. Perfect bow tie. <laughs> oh, sheesh, Dave Stewart. Anything for you. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Why is everyone watching us? <laughs> Stacey Valley, everyone knows Stacey Valley gives great bow ties. I mean, uh, bow ties. <laughs> All right, well, surely there can't be anything else. Ah! Bow ties! Oh, hi guys. I was just looking for my, my stethoscope. It's around your neck. It's literally the only thing you're wearing. Wait for me. Wow, Bob Lash, you sure are a great listener. You are soon Thanks for the quickie, Eeyore, but you definitely didn't hear see me. Bye, John. I'll see you later at speed dating. Not if I see you first. Ha ha. Yeah, I got something in my eye, okay, and I well, can't see the eyewash station. That's fine. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, it's okay. Oh, God, for the love of DJ Kelly, they don't want me to see. Oh, God. These MSTPs are so needy. Oh, my eyes are burning. Oh, why does the lab only lock from the outside? Oh, Dr. Firon, why are all my emails in Russian now? <laughs> anyway, I think Bob Lash has came out of the closet with Eeyore. This situation may be worse than we thought. Ah, now I haven't heard oh, a sound oh, like that. Oh, Jesus. Since Come on. I Come on. was just an idiot. Fail. Well, 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 Whose turn is it to grab the tube? Mine. Mine. Ours. Us. us forever. <laughs> Why, bless his heart, it's a sample from Sandro Santi. Says it's from an infected patient in the emergency department. And I reckon we need to culture it quickly. <sighs> Normally, I'd recommend all the safety precautions, but huh, I'm infected. Give it to me. What? <sighs> Whew. I'm exhausted. <sighs> all a day's work for Eva Feldman. <sighs> you make it look so easy, Dr. Feldman. I know. <laughs> right, Eric, here's the plan. I'll distract him, you go look for that sample. If they culture it and figure out how to treat our empathy infection, all our hard work will be lost. <laughs> Eric and Amy, what are you guys doing here? Oh, uh, <laughs> funny you should ask. We're just, uh, oh, we're just showing the newbies around. Yeah, that's it. Everyone, these are the baby counselors. What is this crap? Uh, what? Cock. Hey, you know what? You guys look a little stressed. No, yeah? no, 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 no. You know what? I can see it in your eyes. You need a wellness week. Nope. And to kick it off, what we're going to do is we're going to go around and tell each other about the best parts of our week. Uh, Dr. Fox, how about you start? Um, okay. Well, uh, the greatest thing that happened to us this week is that Dr. Alsup and I decided to join our greater trio cantors together in holy matrimony. <laughs> we did. We have the gluteus maximus of a Greek god. <laughs> what? <laughs> Do, does no one else think this is weird? I mean, they're wearing one coat. <laughs> Do you want to check their brain for prions, Eva Feldman? Absolutely not. Uh, okay. 
Well, well, I guess it is good that they have found a healthy obsession, a healthy outlet for their obsession, I suppose, but uh, that's just, it's so, so very weird. Okay, anybody else, please, thank you. Yeah, Oh, yeah. Dr. Horsch, yeah. yes, thanks. The best part of my week was that I got to see the supple curve of Bev Yasher's titties. Thanks for the memories, Bev. Lovely, and, and how did that make you feel? Well, engorged. Let me just say this. Oh, God, here we go. The best part of my week will be about 20 minutes from now when I'm smoking a doobie in my car on the way home. Bandits. Dr. Feldman, yes. here are the results of that test for Dr. Cinti. Oh, excellent. <coughs> hey, uh, Dr. Feldman, what do you say uh, we see those test results? <laughs> uh, as class counselors, what would you want with test results? These are for real patients. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't understand. No, no one, one understands. understands. <sighs> you give those here. Don't make me hurt you. Don't, Don't do, do it, Eva. Give us a sample. Our female's protecting mucus. <sighs> Baby counselor, stop him. Feed him. Feed him. Go. Ah, oh, crap. Oh, he must have escaped with the sample results. Oh, no. We better fast track this whole plan before Cindy tries to stop us or Engelsby further figures it out. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Okay, okay. All right, so we got to get the med school and, and the med school administration in the same place at the same time. Uh huh? How? Ooh. Amy, give me some wellness to help me think. Oh, baby! Oh, oh. I've got it! <laughs> the smoker! It's tonight! <laughs> <laughs> Eric! You're perfect! I know. Oh, all the coolest, smartest, most attractive people will be there. Oh. All right, let's grab Dean Daniel and get her to the show before this show sells out. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I must get these results to Herr Sinti. But I am afraid. No, Herr Horst is afraid like puny Vienna sausage, but a big, strong, juicy schnitzengruben like... Schnitzengruben like... Nein, I can do it myself. Sentient lives in, in the house. Boom. Oh my god. What? What happened to him? Oh my god. Dr. Lipson, somebody black had to die, and it couldn't be you. Oh, he gave his life for me. I didn't think I was gonna make it to act two. He's dead. No! He's dead. Oh, why? What kind of twisted mess have we gotten ourselves into, Monica? Uh, Sandro, we need to get to the bottom of this we right need, now. We need help. Give me your phone. I'm gonna text Carol. She's gonna know. She always knows. She I love her so much. Uh, all right, at Real Carol Kaufman, trying to get to you. Need help. Dr. Egglesby Furner. Oh, Dr. Sinti, Dr. Lipson, have you uh, seen Dean Daniel anywhere? I seem to have um, misplaced her for a couple hours. <laughs> Not a big deal, all part of my plan. Why don't you look for her in the security monitors in your office? I can't, somebody locked me out of my office. Wait, how did you know about that? Because! We were in the 
there looking for the happy van keys. You didn't touch that thong, did you? Actually, I did, yes. <laughs> you can keep it. I can't wear something that's been tainted by someone else's taint. <sighs> we know that Dean Daniel is spreading some kind of sex epidemic all throughout the hospital, and we fear that the med school is next. Sex epidemic? She's just supposed to teach empathy. Well, swapping feels, copping feels, what's the difference? <laughs> Ask my husband. The key to any good marriage is to empathize between them thighs. <laughs> PRN or Q12 if you're feeling ambitious. Look, Monica, he has that empathometer thing. Oh no, and it's in the red zone. It says Max Empathy equals John Stribley mustache rides. Oh. <laughs> God, that's not good. What have you done, Dr. Anglesby Furter? I can explain. Hold this, I'm gonna monologue. <laughs> it's not easy being brilliant. All I wanted to do was create a dean who could teach us all empathy by being the kindest, most personable physician any of us had ever seen. I read every chapter of Fistana's on personality transplants. My anastomoses were perfect, like my ass in these fishnets. <laughs> I thought I had created a dean with the perfect amount of empathy, but somehow, somehow, it's all gone terribly wrong. I can't fix it. I'm going home. No! We've got to get out of this trap before this decadence saps our wills! Where could she be going next? I like... don't know! <sighs> Come on, think! I'm trying! She's going to the smoker! I've got it! Oh my god, I'm brilliant! Oh, I like this girl. She must be going to the smoker! It's tonight! Ah, damn it! I swore to myself I'd never go to that disaster ever again. <laughs> Really? I never miss it. Man, you guys, I can't believe it's our last smoker we've done four. You've I've done five. Yes. Done five. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to be a smoker's hour with you guys, though, for real. For but sure. I'm a little disappointed. I didn't get to do my Christopher Walken on stage. I mean, pow, hey, I don't hey, know. Hey, don't even think about it, David. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least we got to direct something cool like the reproducers. Can you imagine if we had to do Rocky Horror Picture Show? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that movie don't even make sense. Mm -mm. Not even a little bit. Mm -mm. Hashtag not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag blessed and highly favored. Um, <laughs> let's be for real, y'all. Our show is tonight, and I could not imagine a better group of people to do it with Aww. than the three of y'all. Yeah. And we're about to be dead, so. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Raise a glass. We may not live to tell our story. We may not live to tell our story. But I will gladly try to write. But he will gladly try to write. And when the med school sees our story. When these MDs see our story. They'll see the story of tonight. Let's have another round tonight. Let's have another round tonight. Let's have another round tonight. Raise a glass to the smoker. Something we will never do again. No matter how we beg them. Raise a glass to the four of us. Tomorrow a new four of us. Let's hope the show goes well tonight. Let's hope we did this thing go right. Raise a glass to Zardom. Something we will never have again. No matter how we beg them. Let's have another round tonight. Raise a glass to the four of us. Tomorrow one to four of us. Telling the story of tonight. Let's have another round. Tonight, they'll tell the story of tonight. Raise the glass to Zardom. They'll tell the story of tonight. Raise the glass to the smoker. They'll tell the story of tonight. They'll tell the story of tonight.
Did you guys cut it out? <laughs> I'm trying to get some fat beats on the jukebox, and you're really killing my vibe. And aren't you going to be late to your own smoker? Blowing me up, Sandro. <laughs> Can a girl get her drink on without being texted by her admirers all night? <sighs> Maybe he actually needs help. His last text said, S-O-S. -S. <laughs> yeah. Staff or strep. <laughs> but why did it say send help? Huh? Uh, let's get our priorities straight. To the Galapagos! <laughs> Wellness, you, guys, you, guys, you guys are just so lucky to be here. Our students are just so talented. Do you want a hug? You need a hug. I think you need a hug too, yes. We're looking so good. A diabolical plan has crazed my imagination. What's that? Let's start by infecting the cast. Such a good idea. I mean, they are the most promiscuous students in the school after all. So true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think you need a hug too. Okay. Come on. Uh, all right, Come on. let's get her backstage. I, uh, this thing is gonna spread faster than trick at the after party at Skeeps. Skeeps. Dean Daniel's sure to be here somewhere. My God. Looks like some of them are already infected. Excuse me. We are looking for D. Daniel. Has anybody seen her? Have you seen her? She's probably going on and on about empathy. Excuse me, Karen Stahlberg. <laughs> I need you to give me some answers right now. I know you've seen her. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to she her. She looks exactly like this woman right here. <laughs> we are all Michelle Daniel. Look, look. What does that even mean? I don't know. She, she's crazy. <laughs> look, Dr. Stahlberg. We know you know where she is. Why don't you just tell us what we need to know? And we can, you know... Drop your sentence a little. Drop your sentence, Sandro. Now is no time to go flaccid. <laughs> Listen, Dr. Stahlberg, I need you to look me dead in my eyes. <laughs> look me in the, my soul and tell me you haven't seen her. Can't do it. She's sitting right there. <laughs> All right, she doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. <laughs> the show is starting. I am the show. Welcome to the thousand millionth, highly anticipated, and always disappointing <laughs> Galen Smoker. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's a good speech so far. Galen's is great. Give us your money. It's for the kids. Giant genitalia, bad joke, pity laugh. <laughs> Welcome to the first Galen Smoker since we were officially disbanded following the terrible production of Rocky Spotted Mountain, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever Horror Picture Show. 
It's my pleasure to introduce our floor show, the Mel Brooks production of a Broadway classic, The Producers, or as we like to call it, The Reproducers. <laughs> Dean Raj Mangrukar Bloom, terrific to see you. Good to see you too, Sanjay St. Bialystok. Absolutely, Raj. Raj, I want to be a reproducer. Me too, and I'm in love with Carol Bradford. <laughs> Which means I kind of tolerate you. <gasps> oh, how, how precious. <coughs> oh. Dr. Saint, I've discovered that we can make more money with a bad medical school than a good one. And we don't even need IRB approval. Oh, oh, oh Raj, Raj. We could go to jail for that. Or worse, lose tenure. However, it sounds like a great idea for a TEDx talk. I'm in. Excellent. Well, let's go talk to the deans about it. Hello, deans. Dean Tamragay. Dean Stephen Gay. <laughs> Have you gotten a chance to read my proposal for the new curriculum? Why, yes. And it's time we gay set the record straight. <laughs> for med school so obsessed, with students so depressed, it's hard to sell curriculum that way. Dean should be more pretty. Dean should be more witty. Dean should be more, what's the word? Gay? Exactly. <laughs> No matter what you do at your school, keep it light, keep it bright, keep it gay. Just remember this golden rule. Life's a pain, don't complain, keep it gay. Students want laughter when they go to class. The last thing they're after is a lecturer with sass. A passing, passing grade, grade will pep up their day. Keep it gay, keep it gay, keep it gay. Well, you're exactly right, gays, and you have our permission to admit the worst students in the country. Not usually my tactic, but let's speak to my education team. And here's the head of the surgery clerkship, Dr. Rishi Reddy. Keep it sterile, keep it feral, keep it gay. And here's the head of the psychiatry clerkship, Dr. David Belmonte. Keep it healing, keep it feeling, keep it gay. We're cutters and feelers, it's our job to see. The students are ready to get their MDs. And here's our education designer, Matt Holliday. And finally, last and least, head of IT, Jason Engling. Keep it tuggy, keep it spuggy, keep it gay. Oh. Open book testing, let's facts to recall. Keep it gay, keep it gay, keep it gay. No surly queries and honors for all. Keep it gay, keep it gay, keep it gay. Something's amiss. Environmental studies no longer exist. Michigan Med School is the only way. Keep it gay. Somebody grab her! Yes, grab me! No, no, no! None of you have a counter mask on! Eight foot Step radius, back. sir! Eight foot Step radius! Back. We have reason to believe she's infected with something nasty! Dean Daniel, you've infected the entire... No, 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 no. no. You've infected the entire hospital. Wait times are crazy. Patients are dying! Ken Sheets got devoured by White Walkers. An Arnold Kuma guy, God have mercy on his soul, got killed in a big group hug. And an M4 student finally held Sharon Srinivasa and loses virginity. 
and now all of these people are at risk. Stay calm, everyone. As long as no one used the bathroom during intermission, I'm sure you're all right. <laughs> no, no, I'm not feeling infectious. I'm just oh, I'm feeling a little frisky. Oh. And a little lightheaded and about to pass out. Oh. Michelle! Oh. She's burning up and covered with spots. Let me get a look at those fat angles before that. Dr. Lipson? Dr. Kaufman. Carol! Sandro! Oh. Dr. Lipson! Dr. Cinti! Dr. Bradley. Sue Bear! Dr. Lipson! Dr. Lipson! Sandro! Rule number one of infectious disease. Find the vector. Oh, vector, not victor. Damn it! <laughs> Thought it was Here. <laughs> I bet you're feeling a bit of malaise. Oh. Did anyone even do a physical exam? We don't teach physical exams anymore. Not when you can just do a full body CT scan. Keep your distance, you've all done enough. No one else is going to touch my Michelle. Don't worry, baby, I'm here. No, don't! Let's just keep everyone hyperempathetic forever! <laughs> you can never have too much! Oh, by the love of malices, you furfer. Bradley! I got this. Hashtag mannequin challenge. Hold up, CK. Let me post it to the gram. Hmm. Seems a little bit like one star tick. Huh. No, no. That's exciting. Uh, uh. No. That's sex Oh. This has all been a rare case of Rocky Mountain spotted fever. I thought those were only found in Transylvania. Oops. Here now. Oh, Michael, I don't know what happened. I remember seeing you and then everything was just a blur. I, oh wait, I remember seeing Doug Gelb. I, I think I got him to apologize for something. <gasps> oh, oh, and Dave Marzano. I think I got him to refuse to do an episiotomy. Yeah. He lives for episiotomies. Oh, oh, and Peter Helvey. Oh, him and Ivy. Oh. And it was tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, this was all a dream. Michelle, you just, you must have been delirious with fever. <coughs> Excuse me, doctor. I, Teron Elliott, and my colleague, Don Stupak, have some very enlightening information for you during what must be a very difficult and devastating time. Well, shut the front door. You can talk, you little schnickerdoodle, you. Yes. As a matter of fact, we have very extensive vocabularies and I have a PhD. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> oh, Eric, our widow baby counselors have all grown up. <laughs> all right. You listen to me. You keep your filthy little yap shut, or you're both grounded for the rest of your careers. All right, Amy. You've been exposed. Do you want to go, Monica? Shut you. You wanna go? I do. Oh, fight for wellness. No. Amy, Hold me back, to Eric. Say, the that I Hold me back. To say. For wellness' sake. <sighs> Thank you, Dr. Lipson. As I was saying, we have pictures of these two brethren <coughs> counselors planting the sexoides tick. Right here. 
We have pictures. We have receipts. You're busted. Alternative facts. I, I claim alternative facts. False. Not a thing. That's fake. And this was way more fun. <laughs> How could you? I trusted you with my life's work. We just wanted to get hugs from every student. And now they love touching us. Almost as much as we love touching them. I mean, we were just tired of watching the med school curriculum ignore humanism and compassion in favor of step one scores. I mean, soon they're going to be handing out first aid at the white coat ceremony. <laughs> Amy, we did that this year. You're killing me, Raj. But you used me. And, and how did that make you feel? Pissed off! <laughs> Maybe our Nakuma guy was right. Maybe you can't teach empathy in a classroom, but you can't go around infecting people either. Maybe empathy's something that's gotta come from inside each one of us. I just thought Dean Daniel would be able to help bring it out. Eureka! Why the glance of Bartholin? I have figured it out in the lab. Herr Shinti, this sample you sent me was from a rare type of Rocky Mountain spotted fever from the tech sexoides. Now Neuron Man is the hero. Neuron Man has made historology great again. Uh, yeah, Dr. Horsch, actually, we uh, already figured that out. You're a little late to the party. Scheiße, I like to party too. Last scene was the first nipple I've seen that wasn't stained with H&E. Yeah. Tell me, do the uh, curtains match the cape? The axons match the dendrites. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> mmm. Lucky for all of you. Bradley and I got enough doxy friggin' cycling in these tanks <laughs> to cure all your spots and get your emotions in check. Doxy for everyone! <laughs> 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 You're usually stiff as a board. And now you're, well, you're stiff as a board. Oh, no, I, we've just been talking about our feelings for the last several, several hours. Well, <laughs> get them, Bradley. Not too much! <laughs> you know what, Carol? We still got the happy van keys. <laughs> How about you and I get in the back and do some uh, wet mounts? <laughs> That's disgusting. Where is that tick? Uh, I was crawling on the planet's face. Some insects called the human race, lost in time and lost in space, and me. <laughs> Why, why don't you try that one again, Bobby? <clears throat> Excuse me. And with that, Dr. Michael Inglesby Furter learned that although he was full of ridiculous ideas, flamboyant enthusiasm, and the inability to say no to frivolous requests from medical students and staff, sometimes too much is, well, too much. Everything in moderation, Fox. And we also learned that even when blasted out of her effing mind, Carol Kaufman can still save the day. And if it wasn't for those long emails and crazy work hours and having to teach these damn kids, well, here at Michigan Medicine, there ain't no fever high enough. Maestro. <laughs> Call my name, I'll be there in a hurry Although you're not worthy Cause baby there ain't no fever high enough Ain't no white cow low enough No differential wide enough To keep me from treating you right Remember the day I made you a dean 
I told you she'd always spread empathy. From that day on, we made a vow to be there to intervene some way, somehow. Thank you.